Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Eliashar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Eliashar, the chief content producer and writer of Jake's Take.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're watching us on our YouTube platform, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're listening to us on our any of our audio platforms, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. I'm very excited for our next guest today. She is a Spotify verified artist. And as of this recording, she has over 11,800 YouTube subscribers. She also has 87,000 TikTok followers. And by the way, her content has been liked over 1.2 million times. And she has a new album out called Nepal Act Was. Please help me welcome Gabriella Raylan. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome, Gabriel. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Sure thing. I'm really excited. Awesome. So let's get to this. When did you get interested in music and how did that passion evolve into the desire to pursue a career as a recording artist? Um, well, I've been singing ever since I could talk. Uh, my mom always used to play music just around the house. So I grew up with it. I naturally picked it up. And then um, I joined choir when I was eight years old and I did it all the way through high school. Um, I feel like I decided to start making music um, when I had a competition in middle school choir where our teacher was like, you can write a song and then perform it in front of the class. And if you get voted, you actually get to record in a studio. Um, so I did that and my song won. I was very, very lucky. Um, and he took me to a studio and I recorded the song and he played the background music for it. And that was the first time that I heard one of my songs come to life. And I just, I really felt just this sort of magic happen. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I have to do for a career. And that's incredible because I got to give you props because not, not everyone does that at middle school. And by the way, you're talking to a fellow choir kid from fifth grade to 12th grade. Awesome. Awesome. I love being parts of choirs. And like, I had some amazing, uh, one of, I got to say my best choir teacher, I got to say is Mrs. Kelly. So I got to give her a shout out. Oh my gosh. Yes. I absolutely love choir and those choir teachers are so pivotal. And um, yeah, my choir teacher that uh, allowed me to record in a studio, we all called him Profe. So Profe, if you see this, thank you so much. You really changed the trajectory of my life. I agree. I mean, it's definitely a shame that when our, when it comes to budgets that art is the first week up, I'm like, I'm sorry, but like we can, like, it's the, it's most important. Have you tried foreign languages? I agree. I agree so much. Because I, I gotta say, creativity is probably the most in is crucial, especially when it comes to visual and performing arts. Yes, I agree so much. Without music, I don't think that we would have the inspiration to keep going, you know? Like there's just we have to get up, we we get up to enjoy art, and without it, it would just be so dull, you know, life would just be so boring. Absolutely. And speaking of Speaking of art, I got to say, I got to give you props because you took, you've made, you've actually transformed some of the greatest pop songs from this decade and from the 2000s and actually transformed them and gave them a 80s flair. And I'm talking about Lady Gaga's Judas, Lama Del Rey's Summertime Sadness, and of course, Britney Spears' was Give Me More. So when did you come up with the idea of re giving them an 80s twist? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Well, um, I have always loved 80s music. And uh, whenever I hear a song that I like, I just, I don't know, sometimes I'll just be like sitting in the car listening to it. And then I'm like, you know what? I can hear this instrument on this and then I could change it this way. I just get the idea and then I come home and I do it on my computer and it ends up sounding really cool. So I'm like, you know what? I got to share this. And you shared and you got not to mention, you got a lot of rave reviews on Spotify for those, for those. I got to say, my, my favorite of the three, I love Summertime Sadness. Because Thank you. it was, it, I can't believe that song's almost a decade old. Is that song's a decade old? And it's been, it's amazing how you gave it like a little bit of a dark flair, menacing flair to it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I really like to um, kind of just bring out the uh, darker, more edgy flares to music just because it's my personal style. And I just feel like, you know, maybe, maybe this song would sound different. I could bring out different nuances that, um, 
I hear in the song that maybe not other people hear. Um, I could just kind of amp it up with the way I produce it. Absolutely. And speaking of Darker and Edge, you released an uh, act one of an album called Nepo. And can you, I know it's amazing what you've done. Like you transported your all your listeners to the to the time of the ancient Greeks and the time of Zeus. So how did you get that concept of this album? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, Nephili is um, she is a lesser known Greek goddess. And uh, when I was conceptualizing this album, I wanted to come up with a really, really strong protagonist for the album because uh, I wanted to tell a story. So. Um, I knew that I wanted to sort of explore this idea of duality. So I was researching uh, Greek goddesses that represented duality because I've always loved Greek mythology and I stumbled upon Nephili and she was actually created uh, by Zeus in order to um, deceive another man that was after his wife, Hera. So her origin is based off of a lie and because of that she sort of struggles to find her place in the world she's not really sure where she fits in and that's exactly what my album's about so i thought it was perfect and we've also gotten to see like for uh for the past couple of years hades town has definitely bought a really great version of the darker side of the greek gods of the greek gods yes yes i definitely agree all right, so let's talk about some of these songs. So we got to start with Wish Upon a Star. Can you describe the story of that song? Yeah, so I started working on Wish Upon a Star actually way back in 2019. Um, it was before I had any uh, real traction in the music industry before my TikTok blew up with my covers. And um, I had just felt really, really hopeless and lost. Um, and I just, you know, I wanted my career to take off and I wasn't really getting anywhere and so I wrote that song down to kind of um, convey how the desperation of an artist uh, who wants to get somewhere could feel and um, I actually tabled it for a long time just because I didn't really like the instrumentation then this year when I picked it back up I was like oh you know what this song might sound really really good in an 80s style uh, because my mom she'd always loved that song uh, ever since I played it for her the first time and I finally brought it back up I did it in an 80s style and it worked so I was like oh yeah this has to be the opener it's amazing that when you pick up something after a long time, it finally connects. So that song, five years, that's amazing that that you can be able to transform a song after picking it up after five years. Yeah, yeah. I was really fortunate to uh, still have that in my arsenal. Awesome. I got to say, what, the, you came on my radar when you did Dance of the Dam because this song reminds me so much of like a confrontation you definitely sing about the time with, with definitely, it definitely jumps out to me like a Jekyll and if you, I don't know if you saw Jekyll and Hyde, but definitely when Jekyll and confront, Hyde confronts his, the twisted, lo- his twisted lover back in the Red Rock, Red Rat Club. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Um, You know, I haven't read Jekyll and Hyde yet, but that's funny because I literally just picked up the book yesterday. Um. And I love the idea of confrontation of good versus evil and the exploration of that. And with Dance of the Damned, it's kind of about um, double standards and the um, intentions behind those. And I wanted to kind of explore that avenue uh, from the lens of a young woman finding her place in her early 20s. Sorry about that, everybody. Sorry about that. It's incredible. And I got to say, Music, the music man felt like very Pied Piper esque. Yeah, but instead yeah. with the Pied Piper going into like sending like sending people to their underworld and to their demises. Yeah, yeah, it was it was sort of um, it was a little bit inspired by Phantom of the Opera and kind of the um, the idea that there's this manipulative mysterious character trying to convince um you to go somewhere uh kind of telling you everything that you want to hear and you being kind of like oh you know what i don't i'm not sure there's something odd about it but i i am interested you know that's kind of the vibe that i wanted to go for with that song and speaking of phantom of the opera it's one of my all-time favorite musicals and got i got to see it back in way back in 2010 at her majesty's theater in the uk Absolutely. And I definitely, I definitely not even brought about it. It's like, 
the Phantom of the Opera with trying to bring Christine to his lair to even Little Shop of Horrors where Audrey too is like manipulate Seymour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's manipulative, but it's um it's alluring in a very poetic way almost. And I I I was I'm just really inspired by that, you know. I, I totally agree. So how about in the dead of night? Yes, in the dead of night carries on uh through that theme. And it's sort of like the moment where you actually enter that evil layer or something you you go with him you take his hand and it's like oh you know what i'm just gonna go with him because it's it sounds too good to be true but maybe it's not you know and i wanted it to sound really theatrical um really just heavy on the vocals and the harmonies and um the music video that i had created along with it is um animated which is awesome never had an animated music video before and um i had it of the ballroom kind of when the main character first meets this mysterious masked man and i just think it represents the story perfectly perfect and that's incredible and i definitely say can you tease us what have you started to work on that too um i haven't started to work on act two per se but i definitely have a lot of songs that could be featured on that ep um in the future definitely a few of them will probably make it but i haven't started conceptualizing it yet awesome pretty soon because you can't leave an audience hanging for that long like the time i know i know i gotta get to work absolutely totally agree so Let's talk about dream collaboration. So who have you thought about the singers, the songwriters, the musicians and producers who would enhance your sound? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I have a wide range of artists that I'd love to work with. Uh, definitely some of the people that inspire me the most, which is uh, Depeche Mode and AHA, especially Morton Harkett, the front man of AHA. I'd love to work with him. He's got such an awesome voice. Um Modern Talking, another great 80s artist, uh, The Cure, that'd be really cool. Um, then I also would love to work with Lana Del Rey, uh, The Weeknd, Marina is a huge inspiration to me. Um, and I'm also a really big fan of K-pop. Right now, I really like Stray Kids and and Hypen. And I think it would be really cool and interesting to collaborate with some of them. It'd be amazing to collaborate like the world of sim- the dark of sim- pop because I got to say, Lana and The Weeknd are right up your alley because I definitely could see a color collaboration between us. It would be very interesting to see what the bright K-pop can do with your dark kind of, your dark synth pop artistry. Yeah, that would be really interesting. Um, you know, I saw this collaboration that Charlie XCX did a while back with BTS. Um, I think the song is called Dream Glow. And her sound is a little bit more dark, a little bit more edgy too. And I remember reading an interview where she was like, you know, I haven't done anything bright and, um, you know, positive, but it was a really, really nice change of pace. So I could see myself doing something like that. Or uh, it would be fun to kind of get a group in on a darker, more edgier song, too. That'd be really cool. Uh, Totally agree. I totally agree 100%. So let's talk social media success. So your TikTok, as I said in the beginning, your content has been liked over 1.2 million times. So what have been some successful strategies that you have building up your audience, you and your team have regarding building your audience? Yeah, I definitely think the su- the success started when I um shared the remakes that I like to do of other people's music. The first one I posted was National Anthem by Lana Del Rey and uh that one immediately caught people's attention. And then so I kept going. I just took their suggestions that they left in my comments and did those songs afterwards and people really liked it. So what I did was just um I took the chorus of the song since it's like the most catchy part and it catches people ears right away and um i redid it just really quickly because tiktok you know it has to go quick so i just you know show up me putting the bass together then the drums and then any chords instrumentation and then me singing into it uh showing the final product and um you know it's 30 seconds long at most and you know, people seem to really like it it's pretty amazing what the power of TikTok can do. I just okay. discovered it. I just finally joined the app after dragging my feet in so long. So it's all, it's been rough, but teach is their own. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Definitely TikTok is 
it's so crazy just how one video can change so many things. Um, I actually took a while to get on TikTok myself. And then it was my friend who was like, you know, you make music and you need a TikTok to promote yourself. And she was very right. <laughs> and, and not just you, but like, look at all the people that have benefited off of TikTok, like the Emilio family and Olivia Rodrigo, who's actually built a huge music career for herself. Yeah, yeah. Whole careers can just happen on TikTok. Like, and I've discovered so much good music that I otherwise wouldn't have just, you know, by people connecting things, you know, like you'll see a scene from a show with a song that's like, oh, you know, it really works and it catches your attention. And all of a sudden you have a new song in your playlist. I, I true, true that. And I got to say, it's definitely challenging for people like who are just like slowly building up. So why do you, so what are some advice to, to people who are like, yes, I want to do that, or to musicians are like, yes, I want to do that. But like, how do you can you describe what can like how can he shape your expectations or like what can he do like when he first enter TikTok? Ooh, uh when you first enter TikTok, definitely look around, uh kind of see what other people are doing on TikTok because I feel like the name of the game on that app is definitely finding what works um, and applying it to your own stuff. And I feel like it's a synthesis of what works as a whole, just in general, in a category you're going for. So like for music, what's popular, what gets views and stuff on TikTok. Um, and then also what works for you. And you got to kind of like blend those two things so that it's unique to you, but it also catches the um, eyes of a lot of people. Those are really good pointers. Even for someone like me, I'm going to have to take you. I'll take you up on your pointers. So second to last question, where can my audience find your music? Yes. So my music is everywhere. You can stream music. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, YouTube Music. I have it up on SoundCloud also. It's just under Gabriella Ray Lynn. Um, so yeah, you can find me anywhere. And also, finally, is it just TikTok or you're on other social media apps? Yes, I am on other social media apps. I have Instagram and I'm pretty active there. It's just um, Gabriella Raylin underscore. And um, I post on my YouTube channel a lot. And then I also have a Tumblr where I kind of go behind the scenes um, with my thoughts of the creation of my music, if you would like to follow me there as well. Awesome. So speaking of plugs... Have you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Share podcast? Visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Spotify, and Spreaker. Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Share. J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Jacob Elias Share. J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Now, you can find my take on Gabriella's music on jakes.shake.com. Once again, jakes.shake.com. It's a perfect place for my music reviews, to what's going on with the Mass Singer, what happened last season on America's Got Talent. All your questions will be answered on jakes.shake.com. Gabriella, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me. I had fun and I really appreciate it. Awesome. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Bye.